ethicist trying to shove the genie back into the bottle. How can we uh, use genetic engineering wisely? Totally different uh, outlook. He also, because he had to win prizes and be boastful, explained to me that his PSR, I mean PSR, PSA was 2,800. That's 600 times the safe limit. He had bad uh, prostate cancer. And this was a man at 50 that when asked 17 objectives for the rest of my life had checked many, but double-checked only two, uh, having a uh, new achievement and having an exciting sexual life. At 78, under heavy doses of uh, female hormones, uh, achievement and sexual excitement were the only two that he left blank, and instead the two he double-checked were contributing to the community and contributing to my children. Now, he left the um, vestry and um, became much less interested in um, religion as such and wrote, I have no sense of a personal God but I do believe in some sort of creative power. Corrective action can be successful, but only if we can improve our relationship to nature. It would be good to start out with respect, if not reverence, for the creative cycle of life rather than the miracle of any individual life. A thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity stability, and the beauty of the community of life. Each of us was born of the earth, nurtured by it, and each of us will return to the earth. He understood that deep in his heart, we're part of the ocean. And as if to give me a gift, I being 60 and terrified of these very old people, uh, said that now was the happiest period in his life. And it was, he was still giving uh, gifts to the community. Now, there's a fly in this ointment. He always had trouble doing each developmental stage, although he got there. And as I've said, he used to bring prizes home to his mother. He boasted to me that his PSA was higher than any that uh, I knew about. Uh, and he said, let me uh, go inside and bring out a trophy. And he brought out a beautiful box, presentation box, done in Thai silk, and opened it and showed me about a hundred letters. And his wife, secretly when he was 70 and retired from his practice, had written to a hundred of his favorite patients and asked to send her, send him letters of appreciation and what he meant to them. Which was a wonderfully empathic thing for his wife to do. And she had the sense to realize that he was a very special man, but not Dr. Man. We sat on the terrace of his still warm um, Boston garden, and he showed me the letters, which were a page long, single typed with pictures often to the attached to the bottom, and tears started to run down his cheek and said, George, I don't know what you'll make of this, but I've never read them. 
so that the secret, probably the greatest finding that uh, Seligman has pointed out in positive psychology is the importance of savoring. At 70, when you get letters that make you cry because you remember people that you've loved in the past, read them, read them slowly, and if it's hard, get someone else to hold you while you experience positive emotion. Tears, like all the other positive emotions, are parasympathetic, not sympathetic. Okay, so that's one kind of maturation. That's one way that the very old are more complex and interesting than the rest of us. They're a gift to us. A second has to do with brain evolution. That although we're all told with time, our brain gets worse, and certainly our memory for proper names goes south after 30, and has nothing to do with um, Alzheimer's, but let me tell you, from my position, it gets worse <laughs> and worse. Uh, but we're told that our brain shrinks and we lose millions of brain cells a month. And this isn't really true. What happens to the brain between 20 and 60 is that myelinization goes up, pruning goes up, and the size of the brain, if you exclude alcoholics and people with incipient dementia, so that you're looking at not the average, but you look at the well brain at 70, uh, it looks pretty good, and it works pretty good. But where the myelinization occurs isn't in making us better at learning foreign languages and doing mathematics rapidly. It's connecting the limbic system, which we've only known about for 40 years, to the frontal cortex, so that the passions and obedience become harmoniously, increasingly better integrated. So that E.M. Forster, the British novelist, wrote, only connect, only connect the prose and the passion, and both will be exalted, and love will be seen at its highest. So that what really developmental neuroanatomy has taught us, but also short-term psychotherapists like Davenu and, um, and uh, forgetting his name, the guy, the guy at the Tavistock that did short-term psychotherapy research, uh, is that it's the id, it's the passions that we need to rescue in psychotherapy and protect. And it's the ego with its defenses that we need to um, get in that way. And Plato, um, some of you may remember, wrote about uh, humans as being charioteers trying to control a horse, a two-horse carriage, one being obedience and the other being desire. And the task of controlling those two horses is done outside of consciousness. You can't do it by an act of will. You know, we'd all be a lot more comfortable if we could just take the position of a paranoid and say, <laughs> it wasn't my fault, it's all your fault. Stirring up passions the way you were with the drumming. Uh, terrible thing. Uh, <laughs> but we can't do it. 
and at the same time humor, that way of making our own and other people pain a joy. If you've ever attended an AA meeting, you'll know what I mean, or the fame of Marilyn Monroe and Charlie Chaplin. But of course, with humor, timing is everything. It's got to be empathic, or it doesn't work. Whereas projection is clearly all about me. So that I'd originally, when I was studying uh, defenses and trying to relate them to everyday life, if for those of you that are phobic of Freud, you can call them coping mechanisms. <laughs> uh, that I call them immature and mature, because during the course of life, uh, defenses shift. So that in Freud's sexist language, a young whore becomes an old nun. Or in more politically correct language, the exploitative, pleasure-loving St. Francis evolved from an Italian aristocrat to uh, St. Francis of Assisi. And, and that this is... Um, going on in the real world, and it's magical. But it's slow, and we have to appreciate that adolescence is a self-limiting disorder, but it's taken <laughs> some of us uh, <laughs> till 40 or 50 to uh, get the cure. So let me, as an illustration of defense maturation tell you about a Los Angeles woman who I will call Susan Welcome. And she was a member of the Terman study of gifted women. And by the way, um, just parenthetically, the study of adult development didn't just look at Harvard men, but we also followed up some of the Terman women, and we followed up a group of inner city men. And while generativity, and what I'm going to, I'm previously called mature defenses, are tremendously helpful to life. They have nothing to do with gender, and they have nothing to do with social class. So the generativity, people who attain generativity were three times as likely to age successfully as people who didn't get there. About 50-50. 50% do, 50% don't so well. Uh, evenly distributed among the Harvard, the Terman women, who mothers only got the vote when they were 10, so they had pretty tough sledding career-wise. And uh, the inner city men. OK. Susan Welcome illustrates that Immature defenses are basically narcissistic defenses. They're all about me, and they work well. I mean, there's no question that Paris Hilton has a better Saturday night in Vegas than most of us will. But Sunday mornings aren't always so good. And again, 